My name is Edward Sang. I'm a professor in computational finance. Here I'm going to explain how financial markets can be studied like physics or mathematics. This work is in collaboration with Professor Richard Olsen and Shaima Masri. Suppose you have a pile of coins and you add one coin to it at a time. Sometimes, when a coin is added, nothing much is changed. But sometimes, adding one coin can change the structure of the pile. Suppose we want to know the consequences of adding a coin to different positions of this pile. Given our knowledge in physics, if we know everything about this pile, we should be able to answer our question. Similarly, if we can describe the physics of a market, we should be able to say how unstable it is. Ah, oh, you may say, we don't know everything about this pile. That's true. But we should know everything about the rules in a market because it was designed. So, we must be able to study the market's physics. But, surprisingly, given its importance, we haven't seen much work in the physics of financial markets. We attempt to write down the physics of markets. We start with a simple model. Here, the state of the market is changed by events. An event could be a buy or sell order. Then we write down the market clearing process with a calculus. A calculus can be defined for any market which rules are clearly written down. A calculus would allow us to study the consequences of orders. Note that this calculus is for studying causal relations, not for prediction. You may ask, why should we bother to use a calculus to study the effects of an order when the rules are clearly stated? The answer is, the consequences of an order is not always trivial even when the rules are clear. For example, it could be complicated by margin calls. A margin call could lead to more margin calls, and therefore, even a small sell order could cause a substantial drop in price. Whether and when that will happen depends on the order book and the trader's positions. The question is, can we work out the eventual outcome of an order? And that is, can we maintain consequential closure in our calculus? In some systems, maintaining consequential closure could be very costly. Nobody has worked out the consequential closure of E2 to E4 in chess, for example. Fortunately, in our model, it is computationally feasible to maintain consequential closure. This means, if we know the order book and the trader's positions, then we can work out the ultimate effects of an order. This is significant, because then, within this system, we can ask, how much would the price drop if I sell a thousand shares? Or, how big an order would cause the price to drop or rise by 2.5%. To conclude, while trader behavior are hard to predict, market physics can be studied because the rules are human-made. We have defined an event calculus to describe a market mechanism. We have shown that, by maintaining consequential closure, cascading effects due to margin calls can be analyzed. Event calculus enables us to study financial markets as a hard science, like physics or mathematics. It opens new paths to better understand financial markets.